Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today to talk about my favorite vegetables and fruits to grow as I got a request for this. And I thought how funny it is that I've never actually put a consolidated video out on my favorite fruits and vegetables to grow. I've, I've done a lot on herbs, like every year I do a new one on herbs, but not one on fruits and vegetables. So I'm going to be talking most what I mostly grow, what I've tried as well as thing, new things I'm going to be trying for 2021. So let's start off with talking about tomatoes. Now, tomatoes were the number one thing when we first got into growing a garden that was the big thing tomatoes and potatoes were the two big things that we were wanting to grow ourselves especially tomatoes because potatoes you can buy cheap all day long any day at the store and they're good potatoes but tomatoes here to buy them here uh they're just they're usually not very good and the price is usually pretty high and so that was really the big thing when it came to that now we do still when we can get a good deal on tomatoes we'll still buy them especially if i can find good organic ones and buy them in bulk for canning but i do grow as much as i can on my own now where we live here in rain country which is on the peninsula of washington state and we're just about 20 miles from the rainforest. So it's very wet here. We have very short growing season here. And for the most part, most tomatoes do best in a greenhouse here. Because out in the open, even if they'll grow okay, a lot of times they'll still get too much wet, too, too much water. It causes the tomatoes to burst. I always do still try them outside the greenhouse. But so far, I've only had one tomato do well with for me outside the greenhouse and that was the blueberry cherry tomato grew beautifully but it wasn't the, a great tasting tomato i just didn't care for it so i didn't grow it again even though it was beautiful even though it gave a lot and they were heavy and i didn't have to have them in the greenhouse they just they just the flavor wasn't worth it so my personal and current favorites it changes all the time are the roma tomatoes because romas are great for making italian sauces or sauces of any kind that you're going to use tomatoes as a base in for slicing i'm really liking the black brandy wine and the i think they're purple cherokees the reason i don't know for certain is those were seeds i actually saved from store-bought organic heirloom tomatoes that came in just a a blend it was just a mix of tomatoes and so all you knew is they were organic and heirloom but you didn't know what was what and there were a whole bunch of different colors in there so i liked the purple ones that came in that one so much that i saved the seed and those and found that those actually do pretty good for us here so the purple cherokee and the black brandy wine are really good ones for for us you know every in your climate and where you live that's and your tastes and what you need them for is all going to be different and and uh, different tomatoes are going to grow better for different people and i've tried all different kinds so mostly what i'm talking about is not just the ones we like best but also the ones that grow best for us and then another one i really like just for snacking and using for salads are the black vernissage and i actually ended up with those as a result of getting a free seed packet from baker creek and by the way baker creek's not probably not going to be the go-to place to get seeds again this year because they've had such massive orders for seeds so many more people are getting into gardening that you may not be able to find them there what you're looking for so i've resorted to buying a lot of my herb and vegetable seeds now from etsy and i did mention that in a video i did this last summer i think that's going to be the best place for you to look for buying seeds because there's so many people out there selling seeds and the great thing about that is you can look for a location to find is that person in your area do they or at least live in a climate that's similar to yours and then look at buying seeds from from them in that way and and find what you need i think you're going to be more apt to find what you're looking for going to etsy and just doing a search so just like us we sell a lot of our seed on etsy on our etsy store link is down below mostly what we offer are herb seeds but this last year i started getting into selling some vegetable seeds like the runner beans the snow peas okay so anyway there's my favorite tomatoes and then peppers i love to grow hot peppers in particular so bell peppers i've tried several times for whatever reason we can't get bell peppers to grow well here but we can grow hot peppers pretty good i think it's the difference is the size the smaller the pepper the faster it's usually going to grow and with our short growing season even in the greenhouse 
uh, the, the smaller peppers do better. So I've grown jalapenos off and on, but my absolute favorite one to grow now, I've been growing for the past two years, are the Chinese five color for so many reasons. Not only is it just a, a perfect size little pepper and it grows the best. It's the best growing pepper we've had yet. I can grow them in pots just fine. Peppers always do best for me in pots anyway and in the greenhouse but it's also just be a beautiful plant altogether when those peppers are growing and they don't, each pepper isn't a different color. They're, the colors are different in their stages of development. So all the peppers typically will come in purple. That's their first color and as they mature, then they will go to cream and then yellow and then orange and then red and that's where you get the five different colors and so but they're all growing at different stages so at, at some point in there you'll end up with all five colors on your plant at the same time and they're also a very spicy pepper i think they're hotter than the jalapenos i've grown and then squash i have I, I try to mix the squash up each year now when it comes to zucchini i grow that every year one reason why is because there's so many things you can do with zucchini because it's such a mild flavor it goes well with savory dishes sweet dishes it doesn't matter and i have videos on all the many several different videos on the many different things you can do with zucchini and the black beauty zucchini is our favorite here it grows best it's very prolific for the size of the plant when space is at, at a premium for you because you're just trying to do it all in your own little shy one-third acre lot then you're trying to look for plants that are going to take up the least amount of room and that's one reason why i really like the black beauty it takes up less space than certain other zucchini plants as well as just is a heavy producer and it's, it's just a great zucchini but then when it comes to other squash like pumpkin acorn and spaghetti squash those are my three other favorites to grow i try to mix it up each year i usually don't do all three at the same time when i'm really serious about wanting to save seeds from one and i don't want them cross pollinating then one year i'll grow like there was a i think it was 2015 i grew a lot of pumpkin and i actually still have pumpkin in my freezer from 2015 and then another time i might grow spaghetti squash and spaghetti squash does pretty good for us here and so then what i i'm trying to do is then just grow the spaghetti squash and then save the seeds from that. And the next year grow only acorn squash and, and then do it that way and then preserve up the spaghetti, the pumpkin, the acorn squash those years to get us through the year. And then that way, if I get enough seed built up as well, then I can have a year if I really wanna grow all three of those at the same time and not worry about cross pollination because I'm not planning on save the seeds, then I'll just do that. And so as long as I have a lot of seed built up. Now I'm not really too, I haven't really got to that point yet because up until this point, I've been sampling different squash and I've come down to my, my three favorites. And then beans, oh goodness, beans are one of my very favorite things to grow. I love growing beans and I have tried several different varieties, but what I have found does best for us are, there's two of them that do best for us and that is the runner beans. I have three different varieties of runner beans. I have the Scarlet Runner, I have the Barnside Sweet, and I have the Sunset Runner. And the, the difference between the Scarlet Runner and the Barnside Sweet, they'll look almost exactly the same. The Barnside Sweet is just a bigger one. I just bought them to try them. I, I don't really see a huge difference other than the fact that the plant is a little bigger, the bean is a little bigger. They still produce the same flavor of beans. They still produce just as well. So it doesn't matter to me on either one of those. And then the Sunset Runner, the only difference there is the color of the flower. So I like growing them both because it adds even more color to the garden. So there's many reasons why the, this, the runner beans are my favorite. So the color of the flowers, the fact that they're heavy producers, they're a dual purpose bean, you pick them young, you can use them as a green bean, then let the rest, once you've got all your green beans canned up that you want canned up for the year, then let the rest dry and now you've got beans for chili. I think any green bean can also be a good dual purpose bean because I've done the same with my purple potted pole bean, which is my other favorite. Doesn't produce as good here as the runner beans, but it still is a great bean that adds more color to the garden as well. So the runner beans and the purple potter are my two favorites. I've tried several. Uh, a lot of times bush beans don't do real great for us. I have yet to have bush beans do super good. I mean, bush beans are great, but if, again, if you're talking limited space, 
Go with pole beans so you can do a vertical garden with those and they're not taking up space. Same thing applies to the snow peas, another one of my very favorite things to grow. Uh, I've grown regular garden peas and I love them, but I find I have more use and for snow peas and they're so much easier because you don't have to shell them. You just pick them young and they're very prolific here. So if you live in a colder, wetter climate, snow peas love cooler weather. They're probably not going to do very good or do anything if you live in a more southern part of the states or if, around the world if you live in a very hot type climate, very hot and dry because snow peas like a lot of water and they like cooler weather. So yeah, I just, I harvest a whole bunch of them when they're young and they don't can up as well. So dehydrating them or freezing them are the best ways and I have videos just on that. And then let the rest go to seed because you want to harvest them when they're young and flat for using as a vegetable in stir fry soups, whatever it is you're going to put it in, or even a side dish. And then you let them mature for the seed. I've tried the peas after they fully matured. They're not like a garden pea. They're, they don't have that sweet flavor. They get that real kind of bean type flavor, dried bean flavor, and, and it's not good. But my chickens love it. So when I'm out there harvesting the the peas and I have some that are really mature. I'll just pick those and the ones that I'm not ready because you want you don't want your peas maturing on there while you're still trying to get to the young ones. Otherwise the plant will just say, okay, I'm done. I've put out some seed. I'm going to wither up now. So to get the most out of your pea, you want to keep those ones if you missed them and you see some getting big, get them off of there right away. And then I just give those ones to the chickens. They love it. They know when I'm out picking peas, they all come hover around me because they know I'm going to be throwing some peas down there because there's always those peas you miss, especially when you have a lot and it's hard to see them and they're the same color as the leaves. <laughs> oh, and yes, I, I know I've mentioned this in other videos, but the leaves of your beans and your peas are edible and taste like beans and peas. So you can even harvest some of those leaves, dehydrate them up for putting in your mixed greens blend or add them to salads. I've done that before or even stir fry them or use them as a side vegetable if you want. And of course, lettuces are something, obviously, any type, not just lettuces, but your other types of, like your brassicas, like your collards and your kale and red mustard. These are some of my favorite things to grow during the summer to have fresh salads. So the, the kale, the collards, and the red mustard usually do really good for us here. And then lettuces in pots. For some reason, my lettuces don't do great when I plant them in the ground, but if I grow them in pots, they usually do really good. And that's a nice thing about lettuces is you can plant them. I've seen people plant them in um, in gutters. Lettuce to me is best when you're picking it young and you just keep chopping them down and then letting them grow back and then chop them down and let them grow back through the season and you can get a lot of lettuce off your plants if you do it that way. So I'll try to grow various different kinds, you know, like the butter crunch and I like the different red lettuces. I mean, there's a whole bunch of different kinds and I mix it up every year, just to try different ones. I mostly, when it comes to lettuces, I'm looking for not just the nutrient value, but the color it's gonna add to my salads when I put my salads together. Now, amaranth is another thing I grow for the sake of using the leaves as a in salads because it's got a root they have a real mild flavor they're packed full of nutrients and plus the other two reasons i like to grow amaranth is i can take the seed you can either grind the seed up for grain which i have yet to do because i i do really good off selling the seeds on my store and that is the as you can see in the little video clip here that is the love lies bleeding amaranth i love that one because it adds so much beauty to the garden and it's all edible the leaves and the seeds even the flowers are edible but yeah so i save the seeds to sell in the store the leaves i use in salads and the other reason i like to grow it is i always plant those out i get them started early like in the greenhouse while my potatoes are growing out front and then i'll go harvest all the potatoes and then transplant my young amaranth plants in there because that will help add nutrients back into the soil that the potatoes might have pulled out and it just gives something to fill in that space because the potatoes are like the first thing you harvest first thing you plant first thing you harvest pretty much and so that and that will fill in that space and make the most out of that space as well again talking about small space gardening and so since i'm talking about potatoes uh know that if you're new to growing 
potatoes. It's really important that you have at least two different varieties that you're growing. Now, I don't like a whole bunch of different varieties, so I keep it down to just the purple potatoes, which I really do like. I like the different color that they add when I harvest them, but the main reason I grow a few of those is to prevent a total crop failure because if you grow just one type of potato and then you have a crop failure in that particular type of potato now you've got no potatoes where if you have several different kinds not only does it help keep the pests that maybe prefer one potato over another a little more confused and less likely to demolish your whole crop it'll also give you a backup so i always grow some purples along with my yellow potatoes so um, I, I actually don't even know which yellow potato I have anymore because I bought them so long ago. I think it's the Yukon Gold, but I think I've grown the yellow fins before. I might even have both growing. And so those are very favorites. We love yellow potatoes. And potatoes are another one of those things that do grow pretty well for us here as well. Potatoes are, are pretty much easy for almost anyone, but how you grow them might vary depending on your location. Another one of my favorite things to grow, even though I don't grow a lot of it, is corn. And I often try to experiment with different corns. Last year I tried going all just a sweet corn. Total failure. It was a bad year anyway. The, corn, the seed that I had was old, so it might not have had a very good germination rate. I think only had two germinate and they only got that big and they died and I planted a lot and that was a mistake so I'm not doing that again I know the corn that does good for me I've grown the Cherokee white eagle that does pretty good here but my favorite one to grow is the glass gem corn the plants are a little bit smaller than certain other corn plants and they put out three ears per stock typically, sometimes just two, but usually three, where most of your corn plants are only gonna put out two ears per stock. And so I'm looking for something that's gonna have more on it. Now here, the ears of corn we get, I don't know what the average size for other people is for an ear when it comes to glass gem corn. Most of mine are only maybe about five inches or less. I might get some that are a little bit longer but uh, they're a great grinding corn. They're supposed to be a good popcorn. I've tried popping some once, only once, and it didn't do great for popping, but that's not why we grow it. I grow it because it's not only is it beautiful and I can use it for decor in the fall, then we can take that corn and grind it into a meal to use for making cornbread and it works great. So I, I really like that. And it can also be eaten younger more as a sweet corn or a roasting corn. If you, if you pick it while it's still young and very soft instead of letting it dry on the stalk. But this year I am going to try one new variety, but I'm gonna do it differently because I'm still gonna grow my glass gem corn. And here's the thing is you don't wanna grow, especially if you're on a small space, you do not wanna grow two different varieties of corn next to each other. And you want them as spread apart as you can get them. And where we're at, even I think I could probably get away with growing one type in the front yard and one type in the backyard garden. So what I'm going to do this year is I, I got this one here, the sweet corn. It's called Double Red. And what I'm going to do is just try planting a few of these in a pot and see if they'll even grow well. But I'll put the pot outside. Direct seeding is best but just to see if it will even grow here, I'm gonna try growing it in a pot, maybe out front, but that way I can at least see if they'll grow here, and then I'll know whether or not I wanna try planting them in a whole big section next year, because I'm not gonna make that mistake again by trying, uh, just taking a whole section and doing that, especially with the weird weather, the way it keeps changing and getting here, just getting colder and colder. So I, I don't want to risk that. So I'm definitely going to be growing the glass gem corn again. And, and then green onion. Green onions grow really well for us, especially if we just like go to the store, you buy some green onions, you use up the green part, take the little thing. And I have a video on this. Just take the little white part with its roots. Maybe if it still has the roots on there, kind of just sort of break a little bit off to stimulate the growth, stick them down into the soil and they'll start growing and you could just keep cutting them down and they'll keep growing. I actually still have some green onions alive out there. Even though the day that I'm shooting this video is actually January 28th, there's still green onions growing out there. They're just not very prolific this time of year, but I can sometimes still harvest some green onion through the winter. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. And I usually just grow them in pots. They do best for me in pots. And then regular onions, like I've grown Walla Wallas before and red onions and had them do beautiful for me one year. And those were from seedlings that I got from the neighbor and they did great for me. 
Uh, I have yet to do well growing onion from seed and other onions I've tried to grow from sets and seedlings since then have not done great. I'm not sure why. I do stock up on a lot of dehydrated onion and I also buy fresh onion from the store. And we this last year we got blessed with about 50 pounds of red onions for free and I preserved those in every way I could think of. I canned them, I dehydrated them, I uh, fermented a bunch. Those have been great by the way so I can keep them raw and then they're already cut up and just use them straight and things. And then some other things that we're get, finally getting better at are growing carrots. I do love fresh carrots straight from the garden. They're just, there's no carrot that you can buy at the store tastes as good as the one that comes out of your garden. There's just something about that. You know, we always think our stuff that comes straight from the garden tastes better anyway. And I think part of that is we know the work that went into it. But a side-by-side -side comparison when it comes to carrots, nothing compares to a carrot straight from your own garden, even if it still has a little bit of dirt on it. I mean, they are so good. And so last year, Patrick built me a couple of carrot boxes and our carrots, even though they were way behind growing this year because of our cold, cold year, we still got a fairly good harvest and I didn't plant tons. I planted, what I did was I planted five different varieties first to see which ones were gonna do best and then uh, kept note on that. And then, so I'll probably be planting those again. Beets are a come and go. They'll, one year, they'll do really great for me. Like the same thing with the onions. The year that my onions were doing great, so were my beets. I was growing those cylindrical beets and they were doing so good. I got quite a few nice sized beets, but ever since, not great. Same thing with rutabaga. So a lot of times those root veggies, they just, uh, in turnips, I've only tried them one year and they didn't do anything. I'll still grow beets and, and it's fine with me if I only get a few because we like beets, but not enough that it's something we want to eat all the time. There's other things that we'd prefer. Oh, and then one more thing as far as like more vegetable related things is rhubarb. Love rhubarb because there's a lot of different things you can do with rhubarb. It is very tart. It is actually a vegetable, but we often think of it as used in sweet things. So it, it works great in pies like a like last year i did a currant blueberry rhubarb and red gooseberry pie and that was pretty good and you can dehydrate it up you can make syrups and jams and even homemade wines and meads out of rhubarb but it's very high in vitamin c and for a lot of people at least around here it's very easy to grow it's a perennial you really don't have to do much with it you can stick it in the ground and forget about it until it gets too big and you just got to pull it out and divide it like my ones out front i should probably divide them up i might share i two plants is plenty so i know my our new next door neighbor i know that they really like rhubarb so i think if they're interested in starting their own garden i might share divide up my rhubarb plant and share some with them. As far as fruits, really, uh, most fruits are perennials anyway, but the fruits that do best for us here in rain country are pretty much any kind of berry, most berries. So blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, blackberries, currants, uh, I've got the red gooseberries now, really love those. And then you have your trees, like your uh, apple trees do pretty good out here. I, I was surprised when I moved out here from, from Eastern Washington, cause that's where apples and peaches and those kind of things do really good. They like a drier, hotter climate. Cause some people who are not from Washington don't realize that Washington isn't all wet. Where I grew up, we got 10 inches of rain per year. Very dry, very hot in the summer and very dry all year round. We got very little rain. You come over here to where we live now, we went from 10 inches of annual rainfall to 120 inches of annual rainfall. So very different. Now, apples do still grow here. They just don't typically get as big as the ones in Eastern Washington, but we have yet to do really great with peaches here. Uh, but cherries will do okay. You know, I know a lot of people that grow cherries. I had a, a sour cherry tree once that did pretty good and it was in a pot, but I think eventually it just grew out of the pot and it just, it just up and died. But I do have two cherry trees out front. I got flowers on them in 2020. They were new. We put them in in 2019. Didn't expect anything out of them because they were brand new. 2020 got a bunch of flowers, but a bunch of blossoms, but like with their, all the rest of my fruit trees even my apple they uh the blossoms all fell off and we didn't get any any fruit but apples typically do really good but we know that apples like probably a lot of other fruit trees do go through spurts well they'll do really good one year maybe not so good the next and 
but apples are a pretty dependable crop for us here as far as that go and pears are good too we don't have a pear tree yet i really want one but we don't have one yet so that might be something we might consider putting out at the other piece of property or if i finally decide to give up on the peach trees out here then i'll probably take the peach trees out and put a, pe a pear tree in place of the peach because i know pears do good here blueberries if you've been following me for any length of time you know that all of my blueberries i grow on my deck in pots been growing them that way for what maybe six seven years I, I don't even know how long it's been now but quite a number of years in the same pots they just you know I just prune them back and I just keep feeding them good stuff I have videos on that I can talk more about but those are our favorite things around here Bear, uh, you know berries love uh, our kind of climate when you live not far from a rainforest where things like huckleberries and thimbleberries and salmon berries just grow wild and blackberries galore blackberries are the biggest thing they grow wild around here you don't have to have blackberries on your own property because there's a tons of places to go pick them where they're growing wild but i do also grow my own blackberries here because years ago my brother-in-law gave me a thornless blackberry and it gets good sized blackberries and they're really good but um, a couple of things happened in 2020 where i didn't get any and uh one was the wet the strange weather but also because the blackberry was in a pot and patrick went to move the pot which had it had grown through which i just pretty sure it had and so it killed off quite a bit of that plant but I know it's coming back and I see young blackberry plants coming up from the roots that went down into the soil all over the place so I might just let them grow wild there I don't know we'll see but anyway they're great blackberries I know I'm probably forgetting some things that I've tried but as far as my favorites those are my I've got my top favorites and then I have my ones that I keep dabbling in back and forth and then I'm always trying to at least try something new each year and as far as the vegetable goals the new thing I am going to just try are is that red sweet corn and we'll see how that does and if it if it does good then i'll probably plant more of it next year and i don't know something might come up i am trying new, a new herb as well but that's for a different video because i've got lots of videos every year i'll be doing another video just on uh my herb garden for this year separately but yeah the astragalus is the new herb i'm planting this year all right well i hope you enjoyed this video and if you're new to gardening maybe this gave you some ideas especially if you live in a climate like ours and if you you're old to gardening maybe it gave you some new ideas of things to try all right well i hope you enjoyed this video and look and be watching for more of these kind to come out in the near future thanks for watching take care and god bless